life of Frederick II to this day is considered scandalous and unorthodox. His unyielding temperament and lifetime struggle with papal power led to numerous brawls within the country, granting him the nickname of an Antichrist. Ironically, despite being excommunicated fourfold, skeptic King Frederick II met his death peacefully among the habits of Cistercian monks in 1250, what forever ended the line of the House of Hohenstaufen. The king's death threw the country into a stupor, universally called the Great Interregnum, the time when no king could achieve enough recognition to consolidate the country's holdings under one ruler, leaving Germany in a state of permanent civil war for almost 20 years. The tide of this 20-year-old dismay changed when the biggest beneficiary of Germany's disorder, Count Rudolf von Habsburg, used his wealth and connections with the Ebbets to make himself a firm candidate for the kingship. To seal his coronation, Rudolf promised the renunciation of the imperial rights to the Pope and promised a new crusade to Pope Gregory X, a former adversary of Frederick II. As a result, Rudolf I of Germany was crowned in Aachen Cathedral on the cold day of the 24th of October, 1273. However, another candidate for the throne, Ottokar II of Bohemia, never acknowledged Rudolf's election. When the new king decreed all lands lost after Frederick II's death to be returned to the crown, depriving Ottokar of vast parts of his land, it became the last straw. The good people of Germany were about to be thrown into yet another war. But whilst Ottokar II was preparing for the clash, the crown had to deal with a much more pressing matter. The first edict of the new king was to wage war against the robber barons, whose activities exploded in the wake of imperial authority during the Great Interregnum, and who committed numerous crimes against the crown, such as stealing ships or kidnapping. If Rudolf I wanted to stand against Ottokar II, he had to deal with the barons first. And we didn't even have to scare them. They were so afraid of our weapons. They are attacking us! Too far! It's an ambush! Protect the laser! Critters. They have no idea who they just pissed. I will personally eradicate every last one of them. Stella! Into the woods. Watch out for traps. Those bastards must have a base somewhere around here. We must find it. My Kaiser! It must be here! Look! Right. It looks bigger than I suspected. I will need more forces to deal with them once for all. I have an idea. If I dress as one of the villagers, they will let me into the camp. I could sabotage their forces from the inside. You are as brave as you are smart, Thomas. Good. I will bring more men at dawn. Be ready by then. Thomas! Now, let's hope that they open a gate when they see me. <laughs> open the gate, bitte! I need to get in! Schneller! Uh -huh. I see. Here is what I can do to cripple their defenses. Damage their weapons so they can't fight effectively. Poison their food so that they don't have a heart for fighting. Lock the well for good. Their camp will burn all right. Right. Now they won't have enough weapons. I hope your bowels rot. You bastards. Now, they can't even put out their fires. Perfect. Now is our chance to attack the camp. I see the gate is open. Time to end this. 
Remember, we do not spare lives today! We made it! The story of the so-called Baron Robbers ends here. Our right is a better place now. The bodies of Rudolf's adversaries bled out on the floor, making the red carpet he desired. The Raubritter's heads were speared up, creating a morbid admonition. Whoever stands against the crown will live with an axe over his neck. Because some people understand only violence, and the only way to impose rule is a power play. Once the robber barons were removed, Rudolf I focused on the imminent threat brewing abroad. He called Ottokar II to renounce the territory of Austria, which rightfully belongs to the crown. After the Bohemian king refused, Rudolf outlawed him and sent me, Meinhard, Count of Tyrol, to deal with the matter. In 1276, I arrived in Styria to lead the first offensive on Ottokar's forces. We need help. Ottokar's forces have besieged us. They have captured the neighboring town and are heading for ours now. Worry not. I am here on behalf of our King Rudolf I. I believe we share a common enemy. I will start by capturing their villages and then build an army to reinforce your people for the upcoming battle. Yavul, I will gladly join your forces. The enemy has just started regrouping. We need your men now if we want to survive. You can take the north path, but only at night. Arrows and bolts will not find us then. Or use the less protected south path any time. But beware, this one is full of traps. Triumphant soldiers thrusted their swords into the earth, marking the land for the king. We made sure the soil was welcoming for our brethren. We did not cry for the fallen, as we are a generation of warriors. Our armor will never get the chance to rust, and our swords will never lose their edge. I do not think we are fighting for ourselves anymore, but for what's next to come, for those whose armor can and will rust. The country was still a boiling pot. As we were propagating the king's word with the help of our trusted swords and lances, Rudolf made friends among vassals and abbots, making sure our politics didn't come down to fists and steel. Ottokar's forces tucked their tails behind them and retreated to Vienna. The word is, Rudolf is heading that way as well. We move forward shortly to join his army. Nine, nine, nine! 
enemy catapults are wrecking ours! We must destroy those siege machines and get inside Vienna! They have the resources we need! At your command, mein Kaiser! Danke, mein Herr. Your help means a lot. You can use my base and resources in our next battle. Last wall is down! Now slaughter them! Otokar's face was that of a madman, a man whose ego outgrew itself and whose inner whispers became louder than his thoughts. But failure feeds on madness, and in the end, Vienna was ours. The news claimed that Rudolf forced Otokar to accept him as the new ruler in Germany. However, despite his surrender, Otokar never stopped plotting against Rudolf, taking Rudolf's attitude it's a sign of weakness. He bought himself enough time to find new allies in Silesia, and waged war not only on Germany, but on Hungary too. The newly emancipated Austrian knighthood was deeply divided, with some supporting Ottokar and the other fighting under Rudolf's banner. In addition, Rudolf made a treaty with the Hungarian king Ladislaus IV, and when Ottokar laid siege to the town of Trosendorf, Rudolf's plan was to cut off his supplies and face the knights that rebelled against the king. Time for negotiation was over, and the renegade knights would have to pay for their betrayal in flesh and blood. Herr yeah, Commandant, these are the enemy villages we talked about. So many resources. Good. Remember, we're just here to capture Ottokar's supplies and use them for our army. We won't build our base here. Let's do it differently this time. We will burn their settlements and rebuild them as ours. Let's capture this village first. We'll use it to regroup if we get into a battle. We should also find stables so we can have a place to rest. Jawohl, we will watch our back. This way! As a soldier, you learn when the time is right for prayer and amendments. You feel it in the wind and in your bones. The birds sing a different song. Even I crossed my hands in prayer for the very first time in the last few years and ordered my armor to be squeaky clean. No soldier wants St. Peter's hands to get greasy by the mud on his shield. On the 26th of August, 1278, we set off for Duenkrut, where the fate of the soldier's generation was about to be sealed. Rudolf boldly decided to face Ottokar's army in the open pitch battle of Morava Basin, where his freshly made peace with Ladislaus IV would be tested. However, Ottokar's forces were conjoined with Silesian units. At this moment, I think we were all aware of the significance of that battle. Listen, we have to find and disarm all the traps around here before we can move further. But Dad, I can't wait to get my hands on those bastards. Son, you have to understand. If we're reckless, we die. Good. I think all the nearby traps are disarmed. Still, let's stay focused. Papa, I have an idea. Let's infiltrate their camp. Those Dummkopf don't suspect we could do something like that. But son... That's the whole point. We cannot just... Actually, you know what? <laughs> Let's try. Listen, here's how we'll use the main forces of our infantry and cavalry against Rudolf. The infantry will march through the southern forest and flank Rudolf's troops up north. They'll be busy battling our men there. 
Anoush, listen, I need your finest Sassar cavalry to help me here. A lot depends on your deliverance. Your troops will stay hidden until Rudolph decides to attack our base. Then you'll strike their back with all you have. Wait! What are you doing here? Atom spies! Kill them! Remember, no retreating! Mein Kaiser! Their cavalry is here! In the face! Spears! Take formations! Meinhardt, you're in charge here! They had troops waiting for us in the southern forest. We must prepare. Meinhardt, quick! Take control of our southern flank! Waiting in the forest to help us. Meinhard, you will lead our cavalry on my signal. Jawohl, I will not fail you, my king. Soldiers, the fate of this battle is in our hands. Kill every last one of them. Each of us questioned Rudolf's leadership at least once. We were tired of all this rousting, but our doubts were dispelled the moment he took control of the cavalry. His daring strike shattered Ottokar's forces with surgical precision, forcing him to retreat. We chased Ottokar to his last breath, and when his armor was worn with dirt and blood, we struck hard. Rudolf tried continuing his expanse further into Czech territory, but was met with an overwhelming defiance. Eventually, he surmised that the best means to end the conflict was infatuation. He gave the hand of his daughter Jutta to Václav, Ottokar's successor. Both rulers administered their crowns greatly, aware that steady economic growth can only be achieved with stability and protection. They created one of the most influential powerful dynasties in the world. The time of soldiers came to an end, so I stowed my armor and let it rust. Can't say it was easy to adapt to the new way things were, but I must admit, living outside of a thunderstorm has its bright sides. <laughs>